Hi everyone, this is Maya Zahira with Psychic Protection Sanctuary and we are now live in our free Facebook group, Psychic Protection Sanctuary Facebook group. And today we're doing something a little bit different and a little bit special. We're going to have a Q&A and this is different because usually I will have a topic already chosen that I'll speak on. But today, um, actually yesterday I posted a question in our group and, and I said, hey, if anyone has any questions, I will go ahead and answer. And um, the questions have to be general. They can't be personal questions of yours. Right, um, so it has to be a general question. And I'm gonna start with the questions that were posted ahead of time. I may or may not have an opportunity to answer questions that are posted here in the live. So I'm not sure if that's gonna happen or not, but we will see how it goes. So if you are interested in a Q&A where you can ask anything and ask, about your situation specifically, ask personal questions like, what's going on? Maya, can you read, can you psychically read the situation and tell me what's going on? That is what I offer in my paid program. We actually do have a monthly Q&A on Zoom and they can ask me anything and there's no limitations. And the paid program is called Spiritual Empowerment Academy. And you can find information about that on my website, psychicprotectionsanctuary.com. So let's jump into our Q&A, to our general Q&A here in the free group. You know, even though we're doing general questions, everybody learns so much. And you may... Um, you may recognize questions that you didn't realize that you had. So let's jump in and I, <laughs> I have to itch my face, sorry. I can't wait any longer, can't hold it off. Okay, so our first question is from Laura. And actually I loved every question that was submitted. These were amazing questions and a big variety of questions. So it's awesome. Hi, Laura. Laura and Sharon are here live, and a few other people. Let me just check. There we go. Barbara. And I was going to ask you, is uh, L-I-T-I-A, Howland, um, do I say your name Leisha or Latia? Every, I'm sure people ask you all the time. Because I am going to go over your question today and I want to read your name properly. People get confused about my name as well. <laughs> but hello there in Virginia and Lori in Glendale, Arizona. Very cool. I am in Arizona as well and it's already hot here. And so that's why you hear all the white noise. I apologize in advance. We've got fans on and Jackie is saying hi from Iowa. Cool. Okay, Laura starts with a really potent question. If a person has been targeted since birth, perhaps before birth even, and they're walking around like a beacon target that draws the orcs and harmers like a magnet, where does one even begin to protect themselves from relentless and ongoing harm? Kind of like playing whack-a-mole. And you're right, <laughs> it is. Um, and on the same note, does one need to keep taking protective action over and over and constantly be in a state of paranoia and what I call um, hypervigilance, right? Or can they one and done it or two and done it? And does one need to know who is doing the attacking in order to protect themselves from it? Great question. Barbara is here. Oh, Naomi is here with Barbara uh, in Ohio. That's great. Okay, 
So I also took some notes when I read your question earlier. Okay. Um, I'm going to answer your final question first, and then I'm going to go back. Does someone need to know, do you need to know who it is that's doing the attacking in order to protect yourselves, in order to protect yourself from it? Um, yes and no. You, there are a lot of protection methods that you can use that can protect you, just provide pr overall protection. And it's interesting because when I started using reversal candles, which is a protection technique, several years ago, I was only going to program the candle to reverse the psychic attack coming from the person that I felt was targeting me. And instead, I decided to keep it more open. And it was fascinating because what ended up happening was all sorts of psychic attack ended up getting pulled off of me. Like there were a lot of different people sending jealousy, competitiveness, anger, etc. And so since I didn't force it to be specific about just that one person, um, it actually had a more complete effect by not by um, I did include the main person, but then I also included other people and I also left it open ended. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're doing any kind of uh, spiritual protection work, you can certainly include who you suspect, but also keep it open to clear out anything else from anyone else as well. But with that said, I do think it's a really good idea to um, to know, to have some clarity on what what and who you're trying to clear. I did a video, I think it was last month, where I talked about how it's important to know, for example, what kind of entity you're clearing before you try to just throw spaghetti at the wall and try random methods for clearing because different entities are going to respond to different types of clearings. So it doesn't sound like you're asking about entities, but just generally speaking, it is a good idea to, to have some clarity on who you're dealing with. Um, and there are ways to figure that out. Um, that's, that's actually something that I do with, my st with the students in the paid program is we get to the bottom of what's going on. But if you have fairly good intuitive skills and you, your gut feeling is telling you where it's coming from, um, then I would say trust that. Trust your gut, okay? So it's kind of both, like yes and no. Do you have to know who is doing the attacking in order to clear it or protect yourself? You don't have to know, but it is better but also keep it open-ended because there might be more than what you think is attacking. There, there might be more involved than you realize. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense. So back to the first part of your question. Um, I chuckled ruefully when I read your, your question about if a person has been targeted since birth and perhaps even before birth, that would describe me and several of the students in my program and I'm sure several of you watching this. So it really sucks, doesn't it? It really sucks having a lifetime of targeting. Um, and I think, I think your question is like, what do you do? Um, like, what do you do about that? It, because you're constantly playing a game of whack-a-mole. You can never get, it feels like you can never get totally clear. Um, so you actually can get clear, but let me, let me think of what direction I want to go with this first. Okay. So you ask if you can do a one and done, can, can you one and done it? Can you like use a targeted method and then you're done? Um, usually no. And whether you've been targeted since birth or before birth or not, even if it's something that's just been going on for the last few years, very seldom do we have a quickie approach 
that 100% fully, completely and permanently clears the issue. So if you haven't already, I would encourage you to read this book. And you guys, I'm, I'm always telling you guys about these two books. Just FYI, if you've ever self-published a book, the author doesn't make, it's like almost nothing. It's negligible, okay? So like, I wrote these books so that we could have a very organized way and a simple way that's like in a small package here. Just like you could read this in a day, in an afternoon and get all of the potent information that you need. So I'm definitely not trying to sell you anything. Like I don't earn hardly anything off of the books. If you have self-published, you know what I'm saying is true, right? Um, but this is a great way to get the information that you need in a shorter format instead of watching the 200 hours of videos that I have on my YouTube channel, which you could also do if you want to. Okay, so this is the book that I recommended that I recommend for you, Laura, the Psychic Attack Source book. You can get it on Amazon. Um, anybody who's dealing with really any psychic attack, but this, <clears throat> it explains all these different things like um, ancestral issues might be an issue for you. Um, also the final chapter, chapter nine, really clearly explains the whole thing about how in our society today, we, we hope that we can use one targeted method and just get rid of it forever. And um, honestly, I've worked with a lot of people over the years and I've never seen that work. But what I have seen work many, many times, multiple times, is a multifaceted approach, long-term. So steady, long-term. And I break that down and fully explain that in the final chapter of the book and why that works and what all of the steps are. So definitely read the book. That will help you understand. And, um, and also keep in mind, it, from my perspective, working with a lot of people where like all, all of their stories are private, uh, all these different client sessions, but I can say that there's one pattern that I've seen over and over and over again, and it's that they've gone to different healers or shamans or teachers who have promised them that this like targeted one-time approach would fix the issue and it never did. And they would go to like three, five, 10 different kinds of healers that would tell them this and they would try with this person and this person and this person and that one time or like the, the one and done approach that you mentioned, um, the issue would come back. So they would try someone else and then the issue would come back. And then they would finally come to me and they would say, Maya, I have literally spent thousands of dollars on people who promised that a one-time quickie thing would work. And, and then I was able to, and then um, I worked with them for months. So I would work with this person for months with each of these people for months and we would get it totally cleared. Okay. So from my perspective, I, I've just seen how so many people have tried that approach and that it hasn't worked, which is why it's one of the reasons why I'm really, mm, I, I don't let people join my program temporarily, the paid Academy. Um, they have to do 12 months because everybody's different, but for most issues, it's going to take like some months to do it. Okay. I, I get on my soapbox about stuff, but some of you love that. So that's great. You're in the right place. Okay. So yes, read the book. Um, and for you, Laura, you're going to establish a daily spiritual protocol. That's going to be part of the, um, overall approach for you. Okay. 
daily pro protocol. And then you're also going to need to work on root, root causes. And uh, there's not enough time to explain all of the nuances of all of that, but you, I promise you will get every piece of what you need in the book. And you'll have all your tools in your, your tool belt. And if you need more, then you know where to, where to come. Uh, the thing about working on the root causes, uh, like the past life issues and the pre-birth issues and the ancestral issues, all of that does get a little more complicated. It's not as straightforward as the, the straightforward clearing techniques that I describe in here. When we get into the root causes, I, I'm going to be writing books for a long time. I have a lot of books to write, but it's going to take a few years to get to these ones. The one like I need to write a whole book about clearing ancestral issues and clearing um, past life issues and clearing soul hijacking and all these different things. Um, so it does get more complicated and you might need someone's help when you're working on that part of it. But you have some homework to do with reading the book and really getting your daily protocols and, and your daily foundation set. And once you've done that, then you're ready to, to work even more on root causes. Cause I feel like you've already been, <laughs> you've already been working with those root causes. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of direction there. It's a fantastic question. All right, so, um, and I apologize. I'm, I just feel like I'm going to say your name wrong. People mispronounce my name all the time, so I feel for you. It's, uh, your name is L-I-T-I-A. I don't know if it's Leisha or Latia. Either way, it's a beautiful name. So this is for you, Ms. Howland, okay? First question. When using frankincense in your home, do you have to leave the smoke in the house or can you air it out? So this is my personal preference. There are all sorts of uh, spiritual people out there who are very dogmatic and who will screech and scream like, no, that's the wrong way. And I just laugh. <laughs> I just laugh because everybody has all these different opinions. I'll tell you what I prefer. And then I think what I would say, though, for everybody is to follow what feels right for you. So what I like to do is let the smoke permeate the space. Let the frankincense smoke permeate the space. So in other words, I don't have the doors and windows open and the fans blowing everything out while I am burning the frankincense or other um, smoke cleansing. I don't, I don't have it all open. Okay. So I keep everything closed and I fill everything with smoke. And then when I'm done, then I want to air out the house because it's like a little too much smoke for comfort, right? So then we're, we're airing it out. We're bringing in some fresh air. I've heard people say really hilarious things like if your doors and windows are closed when you're doing a smoke cleanse, then you're just trapping the entities. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that makes me laugh so hard because clearly they've never seen ghosts or other entities exit through walls and ceilings. and. I mean, I've been seeing um, entities, I think the first time, like, I really clearly saw something exit, like, through walls and through a ceiling was in my 20s. I've, I saw entity, I saw ghosts before that, but, so it's been, you know, a good 30 years <laughs> of seeing ghosts easily move through walls and ceilings and other structures, they don't need you to open the door for them, that the entities will leave. It's a matter of like, what strength do you want the, the smoke cleanse to be? The more smoke, the stronger, okay? But 
you know, keeping everything in balance. For some people, a lot of smoke might bother them. It might give them a headache. Um, but we don't want to go to the other extreme. I was talking to someone se several years ago who was saying, oh, they just like to burn just the tiniest bit because it uh, just smells nice and they like the fragrance in their home. And I said, well, that's great. It's wonderful that you like the fragrance, but that's really not going to be enough to clear demons out of your house or some other nasties. You really need to get some smoke going. Okay. All right, let me check, because as usual, my device doesn't always see. Here we go. I didn't see all these comments. Okay, I got to put my glasses on. My funny glasses. I know, they're so magnified. These are reading glasses, so they are super magnified. Um, Leisha. Okay, great. Leisha. Leisha. Great. Okay, awesome. All right, what else do we have? Leisha has, and I'm trying to put that into my brain so I don't have to ask you every time. So it's like, oh, Leisha, Leisha. Okay, gotta keep this in my brain. I do see a question, and before it goes off my screen, I wanna, how often should frankincense be burned for maintenance? Okay, <clears throat> great, that's from Jana. Um, for maintenance. For, actually, I'm going to backtrack just for clarity's sake. If anyone is dealing with entity interference or negative spiritual activity, then we would not call that maintenance. We would say that's emergency care. And for emergency clearing, I would burn frankincense every day. Or if that's a bit too much for your system and it's like, oh God, I can't do it every day, then a minimum of every three days. And what I've observed with, um, I've just observed this so many times that, that most entities don't like to be around frankincense and they will leave the premises and I've tested it. I've noticed that they will often um, be gone for about three days and then the effects of the frankincense have worn have started to wear off and then the entity or entities start to come back after about three days so if you are under mega attack and you don't have um, sensitivities to fragrances and stuff and you can handle burning frankincense every day um, especially choosing whatever your problem time of day is. Like if you get attacked a lot at night, burn it every night and just fill your bedroom. And then obviously you might not feel comfortable sleeping with all the smoke. So burn it in your bedroom and then air it out a bit so you feel comfortable. And so it helps um, add added protection at night. Now, Jana's question is, what do we do for maintenance though? Let's say... We don't have an issue or we've already cleared out a past issue and it's everything's better or or we just never have had a, a bad issue and we're just keeping keeping everything clean and clear so there aren't any issues that ramp up in the future um i'm going to give kind of a general scope here because everyone's different i would say to burn frankincense anywhere between once a week to once a month. And I want you to just feel into your gut as to what's right for you. Some people just need more cleansing. Let's say you're really sensitive. Let's say you're an empath or there's just like maybe a lot of chaos that's been happening in your home, even if it's not entity activity. Uh, for whatever reason, you might need to do a little more cleansing so that that would be once a week. Like when you do your household cleaning, if you do clean your house, like add some frankincense into your into your routine. And then, uh, but if everything is pretty, pretty clean and clear and you're not really having too many issues uh, and you're feeling pretty good and strong, I would say once a month is a great routine to just... Um, it's a great preventative. Like if anything, 
small, has tried to get into your living environment, then that once a month is going to clear that out so it never builds. Okay, so anywhere between once a week to once a month. And Christina says, what does the frankincense properties have that make them dislike it so much? That's a great question. And I, I am a very honest and transparent person. So I will tell you, I'm never going to just make up an answer. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I know and what I don't know. So I, I don't, I don't know that there's this like scientific reason why entities don't like frankincense. Um, but I do believe that eventually science is going to catch up with spiritual matters and we're going to find out all sorts of things that seem like magical or otherworldly that don't really make sense to us that science is going to have a reason for if like probably when we're all dead and gone. And, um, you know, in the future generations, scientists are going to have answers to this. Okay. But from my general perspective, as someone who loves nature and loves plants, I think that certain plants have particular spiritual properties. Um, Many plants have healing properties that are literally healing for the physical body that and that's why we have herbs for sale and medicines, pharmaceutical medicines that are created from plant origins. Um, that's one one aspect of plant medicines is um, like the actual physical healing effects, but they also have other effects on our environment and there's a long history throughout the history of humanity uh, of just from from a variety of cultures of using resins so frankincense resin which is the dried which is dried tree sap so there's a long history of using different tree sap resins uh, as well as dried herbs and other plant materials, burning those and using those for a smoke cleanse. And a few minutes ago, I was I was referring to smoke cleansing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, about like whether you should air out your house. Smoke cleansing is a general term that we can use, whether we're referring to using frankincense or myrrh or copal or dragon's blood all of those are little pebbles that are dried tree sap that are that are resins uh, or we might be talking about palo santo which is a wood we might be talking about uh, sage dried lavender dried ju um, cedar juniper the, the, the list goes on from a variety of different cultural traditions. And so through trial and error, we find, I have found, and a lot of people have found that certain herbs and certain plant substances will work well for clearing out certain things and other plant substances will work really well for clearing out other things. So, Part of it is trial and error. Um, so for me and with all of the uh, students that I've worked with over the years, most of us through our own trial and error have found that frankincense is a really good go-to because it clears out the real nasties. The real nasties, okay? And then some of the uh, dried herbs are uh, they have a tendency to be a lighter cleansing and consecration kind of um, energy but that said I've also noticed that 
when we take into account someone's ancestry, especially if they are very actively involved in their particular ancestry, if they are using materials for clearing that have been traditionally used with their personal ancestry, those tools are going to be very powerful for that person. Does that make sense? So this is why, even though I talk about how frankincense, fr frankincense is great for clearing out demons, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, and some of the dried herbs just are not as effective for that, well, it depends on the person. Because I've met people who were able to use certain dry, dried herbs and just clear out all sorts of stuff. But it wasn't just the herbs just in and of themselves. It was like the combination of the person's personal power and belief and connection with that plant spirit. Okay. So um, sometimes when, when I get questions from you all, I'm going to kind of talk in a circle. I'm going to just share everything in my brain that comes up <laughs> around your question and you can like take whatever fits for you. Okay. All right. Uh, oops. Leisha is saying, is it safe to assume that coin sized shadow looking orbs are negative? Even though I'm not doing personal readings today in the free group, I will say, Leisha, in your case, yes, you should assume that those are negative. Um, I clarify that this is in your case because I thought of um, a situation that I had many years ago where I did see some very small orbs that at first showed up as shadows, but then turned in then as they got closer, I saw that they were fairies. So that was pretty cool. 